Welcome, aloha. Thanks so much for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. And if you like what we do, or if you really dislike what we do, but it entertains you, click the donate button on your Think Tech Hawaii site and help us out. Continue the entertainment or the education, the enlightenment, or a little of both, whatever it does for you. Um, we are extremely fortunate to have with us today just a, a wonderful, wonderful collection of some of my favorite people in the whole entire world. And in no particular order, I'm going to start with retired judge and author Sandra Sims, now working on your second book, right? It's been a long time, but yeah, we're working. Great. <laughs> Work in progress. <laughs> Much as I have been called many times with good reason. <laughs> And Louise Ng, not only one of our leading lawyers, one of our leading women's rights and women's protection lawyers. Um, David Louis, former attorney general, and now one of our top civil litigators. And most litigators are not that civil a lot of the time. And so <laughs> kind of in a class of his own there. And Ben Davis, just a phenomenal award-winning ICC in France scholar and representative and faculty emerita, emeritus at the University of Toledo School of Law and now at Washington and Lee School of Law in Charlottesville, Virginia. Sandra, Louise, David, Ben. <clears throat> so let me ask you folks an easy question for once. <clears throat> oh, wow. What do you think it would take to enable and motivate people to see and make good choices this year, whether it's elections or anything else. I would uh, posit to start, um, I think the transparency uh, is something that would help. What I mean by that is, I saw today that there was some Russian document from 2023 that was found, which talked about the Russian disinformation campaign that they were they were doing, right? And I was thinking that this vote on Ukraine maybe be is a result of the uh, speaker having been briefed on that Russian campaign so he would realize just how much people are being played, right? I don't know, but I, it just seemed to me that the timing of this was very interesting and, and helping because I've seen some commentators being made that, uh, you know, you're hearing sort of Russian disinformation coming out of the mouths of Americans, right? and uh, and that realizing just how we're being played, I think is one thing. Uh, I want to throw out a second one, which is, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there's this young woman, University of Southern California valedictorian. And according to what happened, the valedictorian makes a speech. Now she so happens to be a South Asian American Muslim. Mm -hmm. And they've said to her, because of quote unquote security concerns, which they're not identifying to her, she's not being allowed to make the speech that every valedictorian has been able to make at the graduation. And I, I think that the process of making the school be aware of how unfair that is, and I'm being really conservative here in the view that. If you've made the you if you've won the award, you get to make the speech. That's that's you know, whoever you are, you know, and uh, and the fact that uh, they are not at least so far haven't allowed her to do it, I think is really a statement about sort of shenanigans, if I could say it, as opposed to just playing it straight. And I I think it reveals something also about our time that is I think useful. So I throw those two out. 
couple of moments of transparency that I think help. But I don't, you know, I don't know. But I just thought of that. <laughs> so we need more truth-seeking missiles, including yeah. in the media, right? Jack, yeah. the question you have posed is the existential question for everybody about how are we making the world better so that people will make informed, yes. correct choices. Choices. Um, mm -hmm. And good decisions, as opposed to bad decisions, which are either against their interests or against the interests of other people. I mean, you know, some people make decisions in their own self-interest and selfish uh, interests, as opposed to what is good for everybody and what is good for the world and things like that. And I wish I could educate more people uh, that they would make correct decisions or at least not terrible decisions. But unfortunately, <laughs> we have a lot of people in decision-making positions that make terrible decisions. <laughs> um, and that's just a sad thing. And all yeah. we can do is, well, hope's not a strategy, but all we can do is do everything we can to get those people out of power and get them and get other people into power who are intelligent and make good decisions that bend the arc of history in the right direction as opposed to the wrong direction. Um, and so one comment on what Ben said, I, I think it is appalling that they are not allowing this young woman to speak. They have claimed security, but you can always amp up security. There are security measures you can take. To, to say security is the reason that we're going to shut you up is not a good reason in my book. No, and the other question is, you know, we've all seen situations, including valedictorian speeches, that have been redacted or censored in that sense. But to shut her down entirely and prevent her from speaking seems to reflect a number of attitudes, fear, intimidation, but also just the expression of it in a way that is, it's an act of public violence against yeah. her. She has earned yeah. something over the course yeah. of 22 years of her life. She has put all 22 years, her parents have put more than 22 years of their lives into making that possible. There are others in her family and teachers who have helped make that possible. So every one of those people is being disrespected in a very totalitarian way, not just redacting a certain phrase or paragraph, but to prevent this human being who has earned this honor mm. from being honored. That's of course, just of course, Chuck, it is USC, all right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is which right. is yeah, yeah, that's something to think about. For free speech or, or uh, you know, moral choices necessarily, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I think they are trying or they have tried in the past, but they haven't always got there. And this is a step back. Yeah. 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 I would think that looking at, you know, make, helping people make good choices on a, even on a more global scale than that, it requires, as you said, you know, transparency. But there's also... The good intentions. I mean, you got to start with intentions to do what is, you know, appropriate or correct. And that intention, sometimes the intentions require a little more courage than some people are willing to exercise. Uh, when you see the this kind of going back and forth with that kind of decision, there's there's some there's some fear and pressures and things. But the you know the bottom line really comes back to when you're making that decision is that you're coming from a place of being intentional about it. And I guess that's going to, it, it requires at least to, an examination of the values that you are, that you treasure, the values that you want to express, the values that uh, drive your, your decision-making anyway. Um, and that's, uh, that, 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 that requires some, some different kind of understanding sometimes. You know, I mean, we've, we've seen, uh, as Davis pointed out, we've seen some really bad decisions made in publics in the public circle. And oftentimes when you look at the the backdrop to those decisions, there's not good intentions. Mm. Uh, you know. I, I there's a long list of those. We don't have to go into all of those <laughs> And it's quickly increasing. So yeah. I know. So right. we just you know, you you gotta start with that, you know. Yeah. Who are you and what do you and what do you stand for, you know? 
you know, and I was with a bunch of Kailua High School kids this morning, grades nine through 12. I love the kids. And they were asking, because there were three of us law trained people, right? Two attorneys and a mediator. One was a public interest attorney, another was a private civil attorney, and then I do the mediation stuff. And he said, What's going on with the First Amendment? And yeah. we came to a consensus that we all felt what was happening was for the first time in our history, the First Amendment was now being used as a violent weapon, not just verbally, but in terms of physical intimidation against people who speak up for civil rights. And we've seen people who speak up for civil rights. I'm 60s, 70s guy. Okay, we had opposition, we had pushback, but it was not the verbal and physical, violent, even military weaponed asser assertion of First Amendment rights to shut us down. That I haven't seen before. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Louise, your take? Oh, so many, so many uh, trails to think about there. Um... You know, I, I do see that the conservative side is cleverly trying to use the catchphrases of the civil rights movement and social justice movements in, to weaponize against them. And I think we need to take back ownership of those um, issues, of those, and, you know, show and speak out on why what they're doing is wrong and wrongheaded. I, I like the fact that I think... Um, you know, from what I've read, the Biden administration is being more assertive in speaking out against the lies and the, dis, you know, verbal distortions that Trump has been putting out. Um, I also think that, you know, to be able to reach our young folks, again, it's into the educational institutions and ways to get them, you know, support their civics education efforts. And I think the universities right now are really on the cusp and the forefront of, um, you know, really trying to chart the right path um, mm -hmm. between the First Amendment rights and being sensitive to the rights of all persons. You know, we, we showed, we've seen how badly that went in the first round of Ivy League president interviews. Um, yes. I under, it sounds like the Columbia president. Former Ivy League better. president. What is that? Former. The former. <laughs> yeah. former. Interestingly, it's interesting to see also how all of, you know, most of these Ivy League presidents are women. Oh, women. Yeah. That was no accident. Yeah. Better communicator. Um, but, and I, I, you know, I think Dave and I are probably seeing that in some of the communications we're beginning getting from the chancellor's office at UC Berkeley, because they've had their own issues with people trying to shut down um Jewish speakers and the like. Um, and I just think it's so important to be sensitive to both sides. I have not been up to date on this USC issue, but if the idea is to, to totally shut down a woman who deserves to be a valedictorian, that's just pitiful. There must be a better Trump. way to, to weigh the rights to speech and security. And interesting, just in California alone, UC Berkeley, Stanford, and USC not within the past 10 years or five years, within the past one year, have all had major, major conflicts right in this area, censorship mm -hmm, mm -hmm, intervention. Mm -hmm. And actions that have been taken, Ben wrote a great article on the Stanford one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Berkeley and the USC ones are still alive and out there. So I, I did see... Uh today um, that uh, I guess on Monday, um, 30 members of the faculty at uh, Harvard Law School wrote to the, the school uh, to protect free speech and to fight against viewpoint discrimination, uh, um, which I thought was pretty, pretty interesting that, uh, you know, on the First Amendment point, uh, because a lot of the feeling you get is in terms of the violence and things like that that you talk about, Chuck, and these other settings, is that this looks like good old viewpoint discrimination, you know? I mean, it really does, you know? Just 
case you were wondering, you know, I'm thinking back to McCarthy, right? Yeah. To the McCarthy yeah. era and blacklisting people and all. Yeah, we're not talking things. about Kevin now. We're talking about Joe. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah you know. It, yeah. I mean, you feel that same kind of uh, blacklisting of people, right? Uh, in a in a way that you I, that I I find quite amazing, quite really. That's the only word I can use that we would have not learned uh, how awful that way of being in America is. You know, it's like the paranoid streak in America, right? It it it's it's uh. We would have not learned. I, you know, some things are just mysteries to me. I think that yeah. there are some people, and I'll go with David's comment, that, uh, you know, their attitude is basically, as long as I get a tax cut, I don't care right. about everything. As long as I get a tax cut, I don't care, right? Just got to think about that, you know, uh, as an attitude. At least mm -hmm. that's the impression I get, you know. They may not even believe anything that you would think would be sort of bad intention. Their only thing is, as long as I get a tax, tax cut, everything okay. I, I can live with anybody gives me a tax cut, mm -hmm. no matter who also they the are. Also, the Nazis uh, accomplished the Holocaust, too. Exactly. Like economic security. Exactly. Exactly. I think we also have to, in, in conjunction with that, there is just a, a general coarsening of our conversation to the point where we're so very, very intolerant of listening to other views that provoke violent responses. And you've got this group of folks that are willing to just, if I don't agree with you, I'll just, I'll just hit you in the head. You know what I mean? I mean, I was listening the other day to uh, a comment made by, um, what's the senator? I think it's represent Cotton or someone? Cotton, who right, yeah. Who suggested that? And I, and I was just stunned. He was suggesting that the protesters, um, there was the day of protests around the country, that he felt that uh, in San Francisco where the protesters had, uh, you know, blocked the the uh, bridge. And of course, you know, in our times, we've seen that sort of thing. That's that's what a protest is about, to bring attention to, to the issue. So you have to do something dramatic so that people understand what the issue is. And his response was, we should just run over them, run them down, get them out of the way. They're holding up traffic. This is a congressperson who thought it's perfectly all right to do that. People should just yeah. drive right into the crowd. They're in the way. Uh, they have no business blocking the bridge. Um, and and I and I I I I, I fear. No, I'm not, I don't fear. I know that there are probably a lot of people who feel that way, and the likelihood is that there'll be someone who actually takes that position. We're in a real weird kind of time in terms of how people express themselves and their tolerance for um, divergent points of view, the response. And I, you, know, you, you, you can't overlook the, excuse me for saying it, you can't overlook the MAGA effect that just says, you know, we, we don't want to hear it. We'd rather shut you down physically uh, if we can. And we don't need to listen to any reason. Uh, we don't need to, we will agree to be, have our views distorted, um, our information rather distorted and distilled in I mean, I, I'm I'm looking at what's happening in the court in 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 New York with the, you know, with the uh, uh, Trump being on trial and the kinds of things that he's saying and expressing. And as a and as a and as a judge, as a, as a former judge, it's kind of like this is this is a, we're in a different world. <laughs> and that that perspective. I mean, you know, even with the discussions about the jurors, um, it feels like we're looking for a way to really destroy um destroy our system like you said the response to the to the to the young woman who's entitled to make the speech the response to how um um jurors and witnesses and potential witnesses are being treated in in the Trump case it's like wait a minute we this is not how we do things this is not how we're supposed to do things and that's what's happening well, uh, and Sandra, as a former judge, I don't know how closely you were following the Supreme Court argument on the obstructionist uh, challenge, but do you have thoughts on that? I mean, I just think that, it, you know, the, the prospect of perhaps overturning a law or narrowing it on um, mm -hmm. impact that could validate the actions of these people or let them off the hook is just 
really it's horrifying to think about. It's, it's frightening. I think that's probably the best expression of it. I've not followed it entirely closely, but I looked at some of it and I shared that view. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. What on earth are we doing here? Uh, we are really totally, you know, undermining the effect of our justice system. It's just, it's, it's, it's actually kind of frightening when you think about yeah. it. It's really frightening. And you think it justifies about, insurrection of activity against, you know, against yeah, it does. Court. What are they going to say then? Yeah. Well, and David, you've been attorney general. I mean, there should be no question in anyone's mind that these people have now been fully tried and convicted of having completely, fully, intentionally, criminally broken into the Capitol with violent intent to do harm in order to prevent the effectuation of the electoral results of the people. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Jack. You know, um, I, I, I think what um, this discussion kind of leads to and, and what world events are leading to is the weaponization of so many different things and the attempts to just grab power and exercise power for you and your friends and not the other people and not for the common good. And to mm -hmm. stamp out the judiciary, we're seeing that uh, internationally. To stamp out the media, we're seeing that internationally. To consolidate power and and just to you know uh, uh, do away with people who disagree with you. And the sad thing is, comes back to your original question, which is how, how do we get the populace to put a stop to that? To stand up. I mean, and and you have people like like Ben's person who. You know, they don't care. They just don't care that, you know, as long as they get their tax cut or their bread or their circus or whatever, they don't care what leaders do. And hopefully, I mean, this country's gone through ups and downs and different periods of time with that. And so far, I, I want to say so far, we have always been able to course correct. And the vast majority of the people have stepped forward and said, you know what, that's not right. That's not who we are as a society. That's not who we want to be. But we're in one of those periods right now where it's in the balance. You don't know if there's going to be enough yeah, no. stepping forward. And so education on civics is key. Uh, freedom of speech is key. But just according respect and dignity to other people is so key. And it's, it's in short supply, unfortunately. So they have to watch your show a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Memorized. Well, we have a trove of them. So, and hey, we should library and archive these things and bring them up as they're appropriate. But yeah, I mean, the one consistent feedback that we get from people of many, many different backgrounds, ages, countries, ethnicities, orientations, politics, everything is please keep these conversations going. Keep bringing it up. Keep speaking up. Keep standing up for the things that make a difference. It's almost to so many of those people more important to be able to hear that it still matters than to hear which yeah. perspective, which yeah, point yeah, of view yeah, yeah, is going to yeah. prevail. People need yeah. that reassurance because you're exactly right, David. All these things are being weaponized, not only verbally. Not only politically, not only militarily, but in very, very personal ways. If you're a teacher and you bring a Tony Morrison book into the room, and why in God's name would you yeah. not, of all people, to bring into the classroom and share with children in America? She would be at the top of my list with a few others. something? That we've come to that where you, as a teacher or a librarian, you've got to you know, really, really re-examine how it is that you're going to, um, you know, educate kids. Uh, and you fear because you're our, threatened. Yeah. Your family will be threatened. If your children go to school, they will be bullied and maligned. <clears throat> you will, you and other family members and friends will be maligned in their workplaces, in their homes, in their churches. I mean, this is, it's not just individual anymore. It's pervasive. Because there is a nucleus that's estimated at approximately 30% of people out there who don't care 
what their leader does or says, who don't care what he incites them to, how violent it is, how wrong it is, how discriminatory it is, how inhumane and immoral it is. They don't care. They are with that position. We need to make people feel empowered, you know, a little idealistic, but I think, you know, little steps, voting, making a difference in your community. I mean, you know, you do hear many youth saying, you know, what's the point? Neither leader is good. I'm not going to vote or I'm not going to vote because uh, Biden isn't strong enough on the Palestinian issues. What is, you know, think about what the alternative is, but voting right. is important, educating, getting involved in the community and making it better. Um, I think, you know, bigger little steps. People need to feel like they should, they should be taking, they should just be sitting back and giving up. You know, and you have the son of one of our most iconic and respected political leaders who is admittedly now saying, I'm running for an independent nomination as a former Democrat to try to help the Republican nominee. Yeah, there was just an announcement where the entire family uh, has announced that it is supporting um, Biden and not supporting their their grandson. This is just and 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 that was what a moment that has to be for the for the country and for the history that we all know that are part of with the you know with the Kennedy dynasty. That was just utterly. It wasn't amazing because you something's something's amiss. <laughs> That's all you can say. Well, and we can well, all remember, and David and Louise and I were probably all here when he came out several times. Many years ago, when he yeah. was on protecting the environment in the Hudson River Valley. Mm. And he spoke up for things that people cared about, the land, mm. the people, which here in Hawaii means a special core value yeah. 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 to us. Um, oh, yeah. How far he's come and what he's able to do with it. So whether it's Russian disinformation propaganda, whether it's... <clears throat> the son of a politician, grandson of some of this country's most respected leadership. It, it's coming from places that show huge, huge cracks in not just our systems, but our people. Yeah, um, I saw this, uh, maybe it was a meme or something online, which was that, you know, with the, uh, with the, uh, eclipse, right? That all these people were advised by the scientists that this was the path that the eclipse would occur on. And all these people, I know people in Florida who flew up to Little Rock, Arkansas, just to be in the line of totality, right? You know? Right. I went to Texas. It, you know? And, and you know, <laughs> yeah, you one did. Of, you did. Yeah. <laughs> But one of the comments that I loved was that it was like, you know, here we are, the scientists telling us all these different things, right? And yet, you know, when it was back when we were talking about COVID and all that, <laughs> all this nonsense oh, not listening to the scientists was. But but people would go with the scientists, you know, to travel to, I don't know, Ohio or wherever. Yeah, to be my daughter, drove, my daughter drove to Ohio to see it. <laughs> to, or not to see it, but to be there in that yeah. path. But I just, you know, the, the the kind of disconnect in those two things, I thought was. Really I know, funny. isn't that something? Yeah, I mean, know? the total disconnect in this whole fraud, voting fraud issue. I mean, well, that too. The same people who voted also voted in a bunch of senators that are, you know, and representatives of that were Republicans. How come those votes aren't invalid too? I know. Right. Only, yeah, no. only the Biden election was illegitimate. All yeah. of the Republicans that won election went down line. Exactly all the ones state. that went down line that won. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. We're, we're, it's we. This is this is going to be a fascinating year to see how we end up. Um, it is very concerning how the you know how the election processes are going, but I think I still have uh, you know some faith in our you know, in our populace, if they will at least sit certainly on the states and the county levels in other places that people will look at what their self-interests are and, and have good intentions and make good choices, hopefully. Okay, last words, Ben? 
I, okay, I, I'm waiting for a one of these judges to ask uh, or order President Trump to a holding cell. Yeah, that's going to happen. I mean, I'm not saying all the way to Rikers Island, okay? But I just order him to, because uh, particularly with this last thing with jurors that just happened yeah. in the last the day or so, where he's, you know, kept saying things uh, or requoting things that uh, were dissing jurors, you know, I was like, if I was that judge, you know, I'm not, I'm not a judge, right? But I was like, okay, you're going to sit in a holding cell for a little while, fellas. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How can that not cross the line? David, you're- Well, there's a hearing on Monday. There's a hearing on Monday okay. on the um, uh, violations of the, the allegations of violation of the gag order. So yeah. if there's looking, I mean, th th that's a real possible, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I do know. I, I, you know, if I were, you know, I sort of sat in that position, not in, yeah. with, a, with a Trump, but there is a point at which you really do have to say, look, <laughs> and this can't continue, particularly when you're dealing with, you, you, this is a jury trial. I mean, you know, if it's just a, you know, bench trial and there's not all that stuff, you can, you can tolerate a lot more. But with a jury, um, no, no, you, you can't do it. You just can't do it. Mm. Yeah. That's just Louise, my thing. Louise, last word? Get people to vote. <laughs> Get out the vote. Yeah. Support organizations that are working on getting out the youth vote and getting out the vote in general. I, I agree with that. I, 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 and, you know, I have a more modest wish. I, I, I really like Ben's uh, wish here, uh, and that would be just wonderful. But I would, I, I have more modest uh, goals. I would just like President Biden to win because it will mm -hmm. mean that the next four years will not be a disaster, um, and and I would be satisfied with that. <laughs> so that's a little goal. Yeah, yeah. And so we want to thank you that's all. Good. Thank you all. <clears throat> what we're hoping is for anybody who listens, for anybody who views, for anybody that they talk to, when you go into that voting booth and you have the privacy and the confidentiality of making your own choice for your own reasons, based on your own conscience, that no one else has a right to impugn or impair. Make the most responsible choice for the people you care about the most. Give them a world, give them a life in which they can live safely with the people they care about the most. That choice should be clear. Think Tech Hawaii, thank you all. Thank you. We will thank be you. back next week. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.